Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to week five of the Launchpad series for the summer. Uh, Launchpad is a weekly series on Monday afternoons that uh, we go through all of the, uh, the books for level one, the work experience portfolio for level one. Uh, this week, week five, uh, we're going to be dealing with cart fleet management. If you are uh, joining us for the very first time this week, the previous weeks have all been recorded as this session is as well. Uh, we put them out on our website uh, so that you could uh, look back and see what some of the previous uh, sessions. Uh, we did one on business planning. We did one uh, on player development, uh, career enhancement, customer relations. So you can go back and look at those if you would like. Uh, we're going to record this and the remaining sessions so you can always uh, look back at them. But we're uh, honored to have Aaron Castillo. Uh, he is the head golf professional at Arrowwood Golf Course in the San Diego area. Uh, he has a, a wealth of knowledge about cart fleets and the, the management of cart fleets. And a very special announcement today. Uh, today, Aaron uh, actually was elected to PGA membership. So he got through the program and was elected and became a member today. So congratulations, Aaron. We're all very excited for you. and. Congratulations, it's a great accomplishment and a great journey. Thanks, Tom. So, um, so we're lucky to, and honored to have Aaron with us and uh, I will turn it over to Aaron and let him go. All right, thanks, Tom. I appreciate uh, getting the invite to do this today. It's kind of a neat thing to be able to do. Um, yeah, I'm the head pro at Arrowwood Golf Course. I've been here for uh, going on two and a half years. Uh, came from corporate retail management uh, for the past uh, about 11 years. So being able to jump ship and get into the golf industry was a pretty big dream of something that I always wanted to do, but never really had the means to do it. So um, once I got in, kind of took the next step to go uh, PGA route and here we are, it's done. Um, got elected today, which is awesome. And so um, here we are. So today we're talking about the cart fleet management um pretty important part of the business really um as i get into it here i just kind of wanted to start by going over kind of just details about the overall impact that it has on the facility and the different routes and then the second half we'll get into the level one portfolio and kind of um, what what is required of the associate so um, what once was kind of a, an amenity to some golf courses is now basically almost a must at most golf courses. Um, so approximately 1 million golf carts in the U.S. generating about a billion dollars in revenue. Um, in the 1950s, only about 40% of facilities actually had golf courses. Virtually every single course now has golf carts and and it, it's kind of neat because, I mean, a lot of these courses, it's almost mandatory to take them. So um, three major brands, EasyGo, Club Car, Yamaha. I'm sure everybody on this call has probably ridden in one of each. They all offer pretty much similar product line, um, maybe just different flair here and there. Um, they provide a, a great opportunity for a facility to make extra revenue. So if there's no golf carts, they're the, the green fees are going to be a lot lower. Um, and then we'll just kind of get into the importance of having an efficient uh, fleet and a, uh, just full operations out in the barn altogether. Um, without having a, a good operation, you've got a lot of errors that could occur from um, having to switch out carts to putting out dirty carts to uh, lots of repairs needed. And it, it could turn into um, could turn into a, a major, major hassle if it's not taken care of properly. And that really comes down to the people and the team that you put together. Um, as we go to the next page, so um, what's really important is choosing the correct cart fleet, making sure that it, it matches kind of what, what the golf course is. There's a lot of different options. Um, major league gas versus electric as far as different carts. And that could kind of deter be determined by 
your area and what gas prices are for one. If, if gas prices are high, I know gas prices are extremely high in our area. It would be crazy for us to run a whole fleet on gas. So um, electric's the best choice. And um, as we get into kind of uh, amenities and that kind of stuff, we have, um, we have Visage and it allows us to actually decide where we want to actually charge carts at. So if um, our, our peak hours for, for high electricity bills are from let's say four to midnight, so we can actually set it. So they'll charge at like 12.01. And so they're all plugged in, not charging and then boom, they start to charge at, at kind of the slowest, slowest time of doing it, which is great for expenses. Uh, let's see, uh, lease first buy. So that kind of is determined by the facility and, and uh, what's your budget, you know? Um, are, you, are you able to drop all the money to buy a brand new fleet of golf carts? Um, I know they're pricey. And then when you get into cart amenities and that kind of thing, that, that price can jump up pretty quick. Um, there's always used options. You can get them from a, an, another golf course that has already gone through a five-year cycle or, or something like that and get a break on them. And um, you probably need a pretty good mechanic to go that route. Um, or there's a lease option, which we've done here. Um, that kind of allows you to get the, the top of the line equipment and kind of keep the price down as long as you know you're gonna be giving it back and, and going into another lease at some point. So um, lease is great. There's a lot of different options included with it. Um, like card amenities, but first we'll decide how big of a fleet do you need? And if, if that comes down to your course, how big is it? How many holes do you have on the course? Um, how many rounds do you offer a year? Um, I think 80 is pretty standard. I know that's what we have here and, and it's pretty popular in the area unless we, I know with COVID it's kind of jumped up at a lot of facilities, but 80 is a good number. Um, usually means that for our facility, we're, our carts are going out about twice a day on average. So we could definitely use more, but it's a solid number. Um, cart amenities, as we get into cart amenities, there's, there's a ton of cart amenities from GPS. And then when you get into the GPS, there's multiple functions that you can um, opt into or opt out of as well. Um, ball washers, coolers on the carts, um, leather seats. You could get them with fancy rims, tinted windows. There's there's so many options that um, you can kind of add up pretty quick. So uh, it really depends on what's the vision of the facility and and what is the budget of the facility when you go into these details. Um, pricing the fleet properly for the consumer. Uh, it's important to analyze competition. What golf courses are near you? Um, how, what's the condition of those golf courses? Are they, are they concrete paths? Are they dirt paths? Are they, um, are the carts in good shape? Are they beat up carts? Are they fancy, fancy carts? And that'll kind of help you determine what you're going to do at your own facility by finding out what they're charging at that course. And you can kind of, um, level it out compared to that. So pricing sensitivity are, are is your facility mandatory writing? Is it um, a course that is walked off? And I know for, for us, we, we include the price of the cart into our green fee. So uh, if you choose to walk, you're still paying the same rate. So this is one way for us to kind of make sure that cart fee is, is almost mandatory. We do offer a couple programs that are walking only that, that kind of exclude the cart totally. So, um, and then there's also fees that are associated with the carts on top of regular cart usage. So um, if, I know we've all seen this one recently, but if a rider decides to take their own cart instead of riding with another person, um, we usually charge a fee for that. There's also spectator fees. If you decide to bring somebody with you on the golf course, you can actually charge a little bit more for them being on the facility. So um, our, our course here, we've got a $10 single rider fee. So if you choose to take your own cart, it's $10. Um, if you decide to bring somebody with you, we charge $20 for a spectator fee. And then we take it even a step further. If we have like um, junior tournaments and, and larger tournaments that are walking tournaments, and um, parent wants to go follow their child around. We actually charge a $40 uh, spectator fee for those. And, and 
again, though those carts have to come out of the barn, they have to get used, they have to get cleaned, it requires labor. So um, again, it's uh, it's a, they are a money maker. Um, responsibility is very important to um, who's overseeing and keeping the carts clean, who's who's taking care of your your whole facility outside. Um, cart rotation schedule. So the carts need to kind of age at, at a consistent pace with each other. And so you don't want to put a bunch of miles on one cart. So most courses will set up kind of a color coding system. And then depending on the day, you'll follow that color code and send out carts starting on that and keep the rotation so that all carts uh, have kind of a consistent path of getting used. Um, let's see maintenance of the carts so there, there is different options within your contract you can get a maintenance contract um, that will kind of give you a tech that will come out and take care of your carts and perform the regular maintenance um, you also have the option to opt out of those maintenance contracts um, broken and inoperable carts um, so we at our facility we have a um, a, a mechanic for our maintenance team and he'll come down, he'll perform big maintenance needs like, um, you know, suspension repairs or rolled over carts, that kind of work on, on our carts. Um, we also have um, just kind of working with employees that we have. We have a, an employee out in the barn who's a, who's a self mechanic at home and he's been able to do a lot of stuff from um, alignments to tightening strut bars and all that stuff that needs to be performed on 80 carts. It's definitely time consuming and a lot of labor to get somebody doing something on all the carts, uh, brake adjustments, stuff like that. Um, definitely something that needs to be planned for and taken care of. Um, out of 80 carts, um, they, they can start to go really quick if they're not properly maintained. Um, staff knowledge, policies and procedures. So. What are we doing for a rental policy? Who can rent the carts? Um, at our facility, you should be over 16 years old with a driver's license. Um, some courses offer a rental agreement where you have them signed for the cart. Um, you take their driver's license number or a phone number. It's always good information to have. Um, we do assign carts at our facility and we use Visage to assign it to the tea time so that we know what carts are going with what tea times. Um, we also have cart control. So it's uh, we can set parameters on where the carts are able to go and where they're not able to go. If we want them to stop in reverse, if we want them to stay out of the parking lot, um, stay away from tea boxes, stay away from greens, all that stuff is, is a, a great feature to have. Um, accident reporting is very important. I don't think there's, there's, there's almost no way to get away from uh, a cart getting into trouble on the golf course. It's always going to happen. Um, you should have a policy that will, that will, everybody should know, or at least the managers on duty know when um, somebody has been in a cart accident or has done damage to the carts. Um, whether that's, you know, getting, getting the form filled out, getting pictures of the cart right away, um, getting the phone number, getting the name, making sure that nobody's hurt. If they are hurt, getting them medical assistance. Um, and then training the staff on the safety procedures. So um, we have a lot of, uh, we have a big common area where the carts slow down and that's important to, to just keep pedestrians walking by safe and that kind of stuff. And um, certain quick corners, the cart barn guys fly around and we have to make sure that they don't, that kind of stuff. So, um, and what to do in certain situations, very important. Um, so now we get into the actual, um, work portfolio and what's required from the portfolio. So this is activity one. And um, this requires an, an interview with a golf professional. And so, some of it towards the end, when we get into more numbers, you might need uh, information from a finance manager or even a general manager, whoever's taking care of that, that, uh, that actual section. But um, when you're interviewing your golf professional at the facility, or um, if you're if you're not working at the facility and you need to visit a facility to get this stuff done, um, you'll need all the info about the facility, everything from like the number of holes, what kind of carts they have, how many times do the carts go out, um, 
all basic information that a golf professional should know. Um, and then what we're doing is we're analyzing the, the, the policies and procedures of that facility. So um, documents and procedure used for this report could be um, could be timesheets, it could be um, could be logs, maintenance logs, it could be um, you know, um, lots of different things. It could be checklists, there's daily and weekly checklists, invoices, bills, um, fleet operations describe the responsibilities of that fleet manager. So what's the normal routines? What who does the manager oversee all that kind of stuff um, maintenance cleaning che daily checklists that could be anything from washing down the carts making sure that the sand bottles are filled uh, making sure they get parked correctly you know scorecards pencils put back on the the actual cart itself trash is taken out uh, locked up properly for the barn that kind of stuff um, weekly checklists and and Honestly, even monthly checklists, I think that our checklists are, are going to be, our larger ones are going to be more of kind of a monthly checklist. So um, do we detail the carts? Do we check tire pressure? That kind of stuff. Um, then we get into moments of truth for the golf fleet for, for the facility. So um, it, when you when you show up, kind of do a moments of truth. I mean, is the does the barn look clean? Do the carts look clean? Clean. Are they staged properly? Are they, um, is there scorecards in them? Do they look like they've already been used? Do they look beat up? All that kind of stuff is, is something that a, a guest is going to see when they show up to your facility um, and pay for a cart. Um, the second part of this first one is uh, kind of breaks it into these different groups that I've typed up here. But what they want you to do is, is describe like the staff size organization and training methods, describe it, um, provide strengths that you th think are strengths for those weaknesses, and then recommendations that you see. So um, how big is the staff? Are they, are they performing trainings properly? That's all very important. And if it's not, what, what would you recommend? Um, golf cart rental policies procedures. Are we using a, a check-in sheet? Are we having people sign for their carts? If not, is, is that something you think we should be doing? Um, golf cart rotation, storage procedures. Are they being parked efficiently? Is there a different way that could be done? Um, safety measures and accident procedures. I think that um, I would just go out on a limb and say that could probably be something that most golf courses could, could really look into is, is are the accident procedures and safety measures up to date? And do people really know what to do in a situation like that. Um, maintenance and malfunction procedures. Do we, what are we doing when we see a cart that's that's not acting right? Are we just parking it back in the 80 and we'll figure it out later? Or are we um, letting people know about it, letting the manager know about it and documenting it? Um, and then record keeping practices. Are we keeping logs of maintenance? Are we, um, that, that we can go back and give to the, the company that we're leasing these carts from when when it comes time. So um, all very important. Again, um, this next one's fairly simple. This is um, you'll have to upload uh, a checklist, two checklists. So one's going to be a daily checklist that you'll see in the barn uh, for cl maybe closing procedures, opening procedures. Um, the second one is going to be kind of a uh, weekly or, or even monthly checklist that's going to be a little bit bigger. So um, stuff like checking batteries for water, cleaning the batteries, um, maybe draining the ball washers, detailing the windshield, stuff like that. And then the, the daily one would be more collecting trashes and all your, your everyday kind of stuff. I've gone ahead and uploaded two checklists that we have in our barn. Um, one is a closing checklist. And it's, it's pretty basic and, you know, you can read through here and kind of, see, you can kind of see what we, what our guys are, are having trouble with or not having trouble with. Um, and then also we have a cart barn cleanup. So this would be something that you'd see probably more, maybe once a month where we're organizing the storage room, 
organizing personal lockers, um, detailing all the carts, filling all the sand bottles one, one last time, going through the lost and found items, all that good stuff. Um, but lists are very important out there. Make sure that we have a, a game plan for getting this stuff done in a, in a reasonably time, timed manner. Um, this is the last part of the um, portfolio. And this is actually, where'd it go? This is an Excel sheet that you'll have. And a lot of it will kind of auto-populate as it as the associate enters it in, but this is the this is what I was talking about. We'll need probably a little bit of um, you'll need more in depth numbers. So um, this here, you can see we at the top we've added sixty five thousand rounds. This was uh, well before COVID when this was entered in here, um, increasing three percent per year um, rounds per year for the cars. So we put about 98% of those rounds were actually taken apart with it. Like I said before, we don't charge a, a cart fee, but, um, if I did have to put a cart fee on it, I would say we'd probably end up somewhere around $20 for the cart fee. Um, and this is a lease. So you'll see down lease payment. There is $11 per month per cart. I think since then we've added some technology that's raised it a little bit, but annual car payments at 10 and a half thousand. And then you'll see the revenue there that um, it's kind of, uh, it increases by 3% each year, but it's a four year kind of um, spread there that will give the, the total revenue. And then down at the bottom, it gets a little trickier. We add in expenses from the barn. So um, this is where it gets a little tricky. So uh, we'll have to pull some paperwork and get these numbers or at least a good idea of them. So um, the first one, recharging, um, you can get this from the electricity bill. Uh, I know our finance manager has done a pretty good job to get cheap, cheap light bulbs in there that, that don't cost much to operate. So um, when we look at our electricity bill for the barn, um, it's most of it's going to go towards charging those carts. And um, then we get into um, salaries. So cart fleet supervisor, how much is your supervisor getting paid for the year? How much are your attendants getting paid for the year? Um, indirect labor would probably be like um, maybe club car techs coming out um, to fix certain things for you or, or possibly like I was telling you that the, our maintenance mechanic will come down and work on carts so that you can add that into that. Um, miscellaneous is maybe stuff like um, how much does the alarm system cost to, to run? How much is how much water is being used? How, how much is um, the cleaning supplies and the towels and the, all the extra things that are that are used out in the barn? Um, and you type all this in, and it'll auto populate kind of a, a net income that your your carts are providing for your facility for the year. So um, that's it. And then you just submit this. I have. Um, one last uh, slide is just uh, an example lease of what you would see. I think this was a, I believe this was probably a buyback option to where they got maybe some discount, um, some discounts for turning in a cart. Looks like they had um, 80 carts, 60 month lease. They, they got the speakers, they got the car control, so they must have the units, the GPS units. Um, but pretty standard, pretty standard deal. Um, the, the, these carts are really made almost for their second life, a lot of these. So um, they, most of these carts are wired for ready to go for street use once they're done on the golf course and resold back into the, the population and sold to people to take home. So um, these things are ready to go and, and there's a lot of different options for getting these carts back into people who will resell them. So um, it's a pretty good business as long as it's uh, as long as it's done efficiently. Um, any questions from anybody about the cart fleet operations? Oh, I think the, Aaron that that was a you know a real good overview and a real good. Uh, presentation on uh, all the, the nuances around cart fleet. Uh, 
I know you mentioned that you guys have elect electric, or I'm sorry, yeah, electric there. You wouldn't do gas because of the price of gasoline and stuff. Um, uh, and you also have GPS, I believe you said you had on your carts. Yes, sir. Yeah. The, um, I mean, with GPS, if you can, you know, like an example, I know it's expensive. Uh, I was at one facility where they didn't want to do it because everybody kind of played the course. There's a lot of regulars and they knew the course. And why would you want GPS? It was going to cost millions of dollars accordingly. It probably doesn't cost that much, but you know, what, you know, do you, have you found it to be a really, you know, tremendous benefit to have GPS and would you recommend it? Uh, I would. Yeah. I think that the, the, the greatest benefit of having the GPS is, I mean, there's a lot of benefits, but I, I don't know what we would do without it, honestly, but, but to have it and be able to track the carts, I mean, you know exactly where your carts are at. You can, you can shut them down if they're being abused. You can, um, you can limit where they can go on your facility. If, if you have one that's like a dead battery, it'll, it'll tell you what the battery life is. You can send somebody out to replace it before you get stuck in that, that uh, I guess, it, a moment of truth. I mean, it, it, could, it, it might still look bad that you have to go swap out a cart, but it's better than them getting stuck in the fairway when somebody's hitting golf balls at them, you know? So, um, but also for, for pace of play in general, I mean, we can, we can talk to the cart so we can message the people who are behind on pace. We can, um, and also just keeping them from walking off yardages or, or sitting there with the range finder. It's right there in front of them. Um, and also on top of that advertisement, I mean, we have the ability to, to put ads or sell ad space on them if we like. So, um, definitely worth it. Yeah. Yeah, as a uh, former card attendant, I always liked it when the standpoint of the last card at night, I always knew, okay, where is that, you know, darn last card? Oh, it's yeah. on the 14th hole. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't have to search the whole facility for the card. Yeah. And uh, well, I mean, we've had, we've had nights before, before these that we're looking for the cart. Where's this cart? And it'll finally turn up somewhere on the course. But I'm, I mean, we've driven through the parking lot through the community looking for the cart and somebody trying to take it home all that good stuff and i mean now it's it's you try and go out the driveway and they'll shut the cart down you know so there's no way for there's no way for somebody to steal a cart yeah yeah um and one other thing you know maybe uh aaron i know again congratulations on being elected today that's a great accomplishment you know, as you know, you being the head professional at Arrowwood and you have associates coming up through that, they're starting into the program. Uh, um, any words of wisdom, any lessons learned about your journey, you know, how you did it, what you would recommend, you know, don't do this, do do this, whatever, you know, anything you, you could tell our associates that maybe, uh, you know, viewing this video. Yeah. Um, have a game plan for getting stuff done. I mean, it's, it's uh it's work it's 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 writing it's it's uh coming up with this stuff but uh it's not hard it's just time consuming and and if you really set you say today okay i'm today i'm going to finish one section and and what i would actually do is i start from the beginning and i would print out the section i would print out like for, for instance this one I'd, I'd print out the entire cart fleet one so that because it all ties together so if you read through this whole thing and you know exactly what's being looked for you and you can knock it out so i'll do the first section today and then spend the time to do it and then plan for the next one okay wednesday i'll get the next i'll get the checklist uploaded and typed up you know all that stuff and that's the only way to do it is just just dedicate the time and do it not sit on it And it's and help, right? So get help. There's there's Tom's got the mentorship program. There's there's so many people that are willing to to help you get this work done. And um, all these golf courses would love to have an associate pop in and and get interviewed and give them this info. Yeah, I think that's a, a big thing that the, maybe a lot of us didn't do or don't do enough of is the networking and asking for the help. Um, we have now gone through it and 
we absolutely, if you know somebody asks you from another facility if they can stop in an interview, you're going to say yes. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and you know, so they they need to to understand that that's we're absolutely out there to help, as well as all of the official PGA mentorship uh, programs and the PGA of America and those PGM hotlines, the mentor hotlines and stuff. Yeah, I, that's a very good point, Aaron. Uh, yeah. I, I really think that. Uh, anything else from anybody out there? Any questions or thoughts? Well, at that point, then, you know, I think that uh, we had a great overview and uh, understanding of cart fleet management. I want to thank again, Aaron Castillo, for, for spending his time with us this afternoon. Um, you know, one last time, congratulations on being elected. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing Aaron again. And if you guys have never been to Arrowwood, uh, it's a it's a phenomenal facility in the San Diego area. Uh, please, uh, you know, stop by and say hello, if nothing else, to uh, both uh, Tom Sohn, Nikki Pritchard, Aaron Castillo. They're all just wonderful folks. And uh, you guys, uh, if you stop by, they will help you out wherever and however they can. So um, again, Aaron, thank you so much. Um, thank you for, for viewing this video and for participating. If you do want to see it, we will record this. It has been recorded. We'll put it up on the website so you can go back and take a look at maybe some of the checklists that Aaron put on his slides so you can get an idea of some of that or some of the other things. Thank you again. Uh, look forward to seeing everybody next Monday, uh, four o'clock uh, Pacific time. Uh, and we'll at that point, we'll, we will be doing next Monday, we're going to have um, Ron Dupree talk to us about uh, career enhancement, uh, career advancement. So thanks again, Aaron. I look forward to seeing you everybody next week. Thanks, Goodbye. Tom.